A tale of two members of the Uzumaki clan, Nagato, famed by the alias Pain, and Naruto, who would later go on to be known as the seventh Okage, both students under Jiraiya and both orphaned and alone due to the effects of war and things neither had control over. The two shinobi are similar in almost every aspect, yet different. Two people on the same path who chose to diverge at the fork in the road. Naruto, despite his shortcomings and misfortunes, never once stopped believing in his far-fetched dreams, letting them drive him forward instead of the other way around. Nagato was one who sought someone else's dreams, only for them to fail him and desired to change how these dreams were accomplished to force them to work. Naruto and Nagato were similar in almost every way, but completely mirrored. This is why I've always personally loved the dynamic between these two characters. Each started as the same person, but slowly, circumstance and personality began to change them. So in this video, I want to examine what would have happened if Naruto and Nagato had traded places. What could Nagato have done in Team 7? What if Naruto helped to found the Akatsuki? And most of all, we all just want to see Naruto with the Rinnegan, or am I the only one? Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Our story starts in Amegakure's outskirts. A man named Fuso and his wife Issei have celebrated the birth of their firstborn son. His name? Naruto. At some point in time, an elderly man with dreams that go beyond his lifetime decide to implant his ocular jutsu into the child. All was peaceful. Then suddenly, the second shinobi world war breaks out. Taking shelter in their home, Issei and Fuso hide with their child until a group of Konoha shinobi enter the home. They try to escape, but a vase falls to the ground and the shinobi hear it. Mistaking his parents for enemy shinobi, they attack. In the end, both mother and father lie dead. The shinobi apologize profusely for their accident. They weren't in the business of murdering civilians, it was an honest mistake. The father had attacked first. Naruto hears none of this. All he knows is the simple truth. They killed his parents. Unleashing the power of the Rinnegan, Naruto rips them apart. So far, the story is the same. Anyone with this sort of power would react this way. At least, most people close to Nagato and Naruto's personality would do this. Naruto leaves his home much like Nagato would, and would have been found by Yahiko and Konan just as Nagato had. They share everything, a home, food, dreams. Yahiko's dream of peace is one that deeply resonates within Naruto, and his fire and passion hope to bring fruit of this dream. They approach an old sage known as Jiraiya and his squad. Orochimaru offers to kill them to spare them from such suffering, but Jiraiya declines. His guilt overcomes him and he decides to make shinobi of them. In truth, Jiraiya never meant to teach them ninjutsu. He tried to teach them practical skills such as fishing and survival. They found a small place to live and under the pretense of shinobi training proceeded to make functional people out of them. That was until a Chunin of Iwagakure attacks. Much like Nagato, Naruto's Rinnegan would activate and he would kill the ninja. Naruto apologizes. After all, he didn't mean to. It was a knee-jerk reaction. Jiraiya comforts him in telling him that he had no choice. He believes Naruto to be the reincarnation of the Sage of Six Paths. And while he was not technically wrong about half of this, he didn't yet realize the true power Naruto had deep down. Bearing both the Rinnegan of Madara, the reincarnation of Indra, Naruto, the current reincarnation of Asura, bore the power of the Sage of Six Paths deep within. It had merely yet to awaken in full. When Madara implanted these eyes into Naruto's head, he had no clue the monster he was accidentally creating, a god of destruction or perhaps a god of creation. Seriously though, we need to stop and contemplate this. Naruto right now has just received the second part of the Sage of Six Paths Chakra. Do you know the massive power up this could give him? I'm talking something akin to Six Paths Sage Mode. He would likely achieve a mode similar to Toneri's Tensaigon Chakra Mode, which was just about as strong as Naruto's Sage Mode, and it even came with Truth Seeking Balls. So we've just stumbled upon perhaps the most broken character possible in Naruto's first and second part. The only way he could get more broken is if he had the Ten Tails. For three years, our pervy sage teaches the three. Naruto easily grasps every technique Jiraiya presents to them. When they defeat one of his clones, he decides that they're ready to go, and so Jiraiya returns to Konoha and lets the three become their own people. The three of them form the organization known as the Akatsuki and work to reform Amegakure from the inside. Their message of love, peace, and chicken grease really caught fire in Ame, and they became very popular. Folk heroic in a Robin Hood-esque style. 
However, Hanzo, the leader of the village, does not like this. With the help of Danzo Shimura, he leads the three into an ambush in which Yahiko sacrifices himself to protect Naruto. Naruto, in anger, summons an incredible amount of strength. His body covered in a blue glow, the chakra almost dripping off him as black orbs hover in the background. With this godlike being hovering before them, even Hanzo was wetting himself. Naruto easily crushes them all. Hanzo, however, escapes. Now we reach our first big difference. First off, due to Naruto being Asura's reincarnation, it only seems right that he get a form of Six Paths Sage Mode. I know that such an event is unlikely to happen, as it took Madara nearly to the end of his life before he could achieve the Rinnegan, but for the sake of story, I'm allowing such an event for two reasons. One, it looks cool, and two, the events that would have occurred through Nagato's line of events would have essentially paralyzed Naruto and made him all skin and bones, and well, that doesn't seem like the sort of thing that would happen to someone in a story like I'm weaving. Besides, Naruto didn't have such a connection to the Sage of Six Paths, so I assume that this connection in a spiritual sense would essentially push Naruto over the OP line. Now the second thing that changes is in Naruto's perception here. When Yahiko died, Nagato lost faith in the dream they all fought for. Naruto likely would not. He is a gutsy ninja who believes in what he believes in, even in the face of anything that would tell him that he's wrong. So that being said, Yahiko's dream would, instead of dying, be propelled forward. Yahiko's sacrifice serving as the rocket fuel that sets Naruto's pants on fire to get this dream accomplished. That being said, Naruto wouldn't likely bring into the organization people he didn't trust, so S-rank missing nin like Orochimaru likely would never be able to enter it. Naruto would keep it honorable. The people place their faith and trust in them to accomplish the goals they preached, and so the organization would only accept honorable people who hold up that dream. This means that they would likely deny Tobi's offers and likely would not include anyone who had previously been in the Akatsuki during Nagato's leadership. The Akatsuki would likely remain pure and stick almost identically with Yahiko's leadership. Now, about that civil war in Ame. As we all know, Nagato used the Six Paths of Pain, each one a body controlled by his Rinnegan. Of course, I don't think Naruto would do this. First, he would never desecrate the body of his friend like that. He still holds Yahiko and everything he stood for personally, and also feels as if he carries a piece of his friend inside of him. So instead of puppeting him, he would emulate him to the highest degree, all while remaining true to himself and his own beliefs. That being said, Shadow Clone Jutsu would be more his style anyway. The civil war would go rather smoothly, Naruto's power both inspiring those who stood with him and striking fear into those against. He might actually get this done faster due to possessing a form of Sage Mode. Hanzo wouldn't really stand much of a chance against this one. But unlike Nagato, Naruto would not kill Hanzo. He would imprison him because Naruto wants to keep true to his friend's belief. This would symbolize what he, as well as everyone else, should strive for. Even when you desire revenge, mercy brings peace. And with that, Ame would be under Naruto's control. From here, his goals would widen to the larger world. Tobi, however, would be working on his own plans, a more diabolical aim. He would form a team of his own. He would likely use S-rank missing nin, such as Itachi, Orochimaru, Sasori, etc, etc. So technically, there are now two Akatsuki, the one led by Naruto, and one that should be noted to not go by the Akatsuki name led by Tobi. Now we jump over to somewhere else. Another place, another time, another face, born to the sitting Hokage and his wife. His name is Nagato Uzumaki, and he has just been born. Sad news for him, Tobi actually tried to hijack the Ninetales from Nagato's mother and destroy the village. Minato and his wife Kushina fight valiantly to protect their village, their child, and their world, but in the end they perish. Before death, Minato seals half of the Ninetales chakra into Nagato, and so his story begins, one that will inevitably be filled with pain. Nagato would, much like Naruto, live by himself, off the allowance afforded to him by the Hokage. But Nagato couldn't be more different than Naruto. He doesn't tend to cause much trouble, isn't very assertive, and is actually very sensitive. This is actually a very bad place for Nagato to be, because he is currently the most hated person in the village. Everyone hates him and he doesn't know why, and that really upsets him. He cries a lot, very depressed. He can't focus on his studies and so he falls behind. Nagato isn't stupid and he's actually very skilled in a myriad of different subjects, but he can't focus because he's often bullied and tends to be mistreated by most adults in the village. This really gets to Iruka. Iruka is perhaps the only person besides the Hokage himself that actually seems to care for him. Seeing how far behind Nagato falls, Iruka starts to hang out with him more and more and tutor him. Eventually Nagato would pass the academy, 
This would generally be due to how he is told he would be assigned to a team, and that a team is like a family. This prospect gives him the motivation to at least make a passing grade. He would then be put in with Team 7. His squad mates are Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha. He knows that Sasuke is the cool kid and admires this. He also, much like Naruto, would develop a small crush on Sakura, but he wouldn't be as blatant as Naruto is about it, keeping it a hidden secret that anyone who looks at him in her presence instantly knows. Sakura also probably wouldn't be as rude to Nagato due to him appearing to be timid and shy. His many years of emotional abuse by the villagers have caused him to close off most of his external connection. He doesn't talk much unless he trusts them. He would then be introduced to Kakashi who would immediately know he was in for it because Nagato was there. In a way though, he would remind Kakashi of his old comrade, Obito. They would do the bell test and Nagato would not be the best at this. Sasuke would try far too hard all on his own and fail, and Nagato would barely be able to keep up, and Sakura would also try. Sasuke would refuse to work with Nagato because he would seem almost useless, but Nagato was far from useless. He was merely not yet warmed up to the people around him. As the mission's consequences and goals set in, as well as the fear of dragging people down, he would eventually manage to start catching up. When all fails, Nagato would be the first to say that they should team up. Sakura is all for it, but Sasuke doesn't like the idea of it. After all, there are only two bells and three of them. Nagato would state that he doesn't want to hold them back, and so if they get the bells, he would volunteer to be the one sent back to the academy. Eventually, Sasuke would submit and they would work together, but nonetheless, they still fail. Nagato is upset, feeling as though he dragged his team down, only to be told by Kakashi that the goal was to test their teamwork, and that the team would have failed if Nagato had not been there. This gives a good confidence boost to Nagato, who smiles for the first time in a long time. Eventually comes along the mission to the Land of Waves. They're attacked by the Demon Brothers and Nagato utterly freezes. Sasuke would save him. He would, of course, call him a baby. But to be honest, he's likely not gonna be out to mess up Nagato's confidence, as Nagato, unlike Naruto, isn't very boastful. So I'm sure Sasuke would have more mercy on Nagato who is already fragile as a glass doll. So he'd likely say something more along the lines of growing more confident and courageous, saying that a time might come when Nagato is the only one who can save the team. Nagato takes it to heart and promises to do better. They eventually find Zabaza and face off against him. Kakashi gets captured as before. Nagato and Sasuke team up to fight Zabaza and with Nagato's mind they come up with a plan to use the only real moves they know. Shadow Clone Jutsu and Transformation Jutsu. And the plan plays out pretty similarly to what happened in the original canon. They proceed to do the climbing tree practice and Nagato along with Sakura manage to do it pretty quick. Sasuke's aggression keeps him from being able to learn too quickly. At supper, Inari would act out due to them being ninja and claim that heroes don't exist. Instead of getting into it with Inari like Naruto would, Nagato would listen quietly. And when Inari storms off, Tazuna tells the tale of Kaiza. Nagato's reaction would instead be to go after Inari thereafter. He would walk in and find the boy crying over a picture of himself and Kaiza. Inari would hide it and refuse to face Nagato, but Nagato wouldn't leave. He would sit down next to Inari and tell him that he understands what it's like to grow up without anyone to look up to. He would go over his own life story and make comparisons between the two of them. In the end, he would tell Inari that he understands. Inari would state that Nagato knows nothing since he never had to suffer the loss of someone he loved. He had always been alone, so how can he know the pain of losing someone? Nagato would look over, tears in his eyes, and says he knows pain all too well. Inari and Nagato would connect over their painful histories. Inari would see that even though no one was there for Nagato, that Nagato plans to be there for others. Inari starts to gain courage from Nagato, and Nagato in turn realizes that the world is in need of heroes, even if it is dangerous, so he gains courage from Inari. The story progresses. The battle on the bridge would occur, and Nagato would find himself outside the demonic mirroring ice crystals dome where Sasuke is fighting. He would not jump in like Naruto. Instead, he would help protect Tezuna with Sakura. Even without Naruto there, however, Sasuke would fall, and Nagato would see it. Nagato would rush over to save him, only to believe he's dead. And this is where Nagato would achieve his tailed beast cloak for the first time. He would use it to effortlessly kill Haku. Zabuza would be killed by Kakashi. I could then see Gato and his men coming. Normally Kakashi might order them to retreat back, but Nagato is in a frenzy. He charges into the crowd, mercilessly killing Gato and many of his men. To keep Nagato from getting killed, Kakashi would rush in as well, using his Sharingan and likely his Chidori to quickly dispose of all who would attempt to kill Nagato. They would end up wounded, but both Nagato and Kakashi would survive. They then would pass out from exhaustion. Despite Nagato having been fighting the most ferociously, Kakashi is in far worse shape for having to first face Zabuza, and then Gato's men, all while using the Sharingan and his Chidori. Kakashi would also still be recovering from his last battle with Zabuza, and would be left near dead from his overuse of Chakra. Nagato would have taken many wounds, but his incredible Chakra reserves mixed with that of the Nine Tails keep him out of the red. After some more time resting in whatever medical facility the Land of Waves offers, they would begin to return to Konoha. 
After the slaughter on the bridge, which resulted in the death of the demon Zabaza, as well as his men at the hand of what could possibly be considered a demon as well, they decide to name the bridge the Great Red Mist Bridge, a name that also references the horrible practices that created Zabaza and created the name, the Red Mist Village, from where Zabaza originated. Nagato would have very vague knowledge of what came over him, and not particularly know what happened. Kakashi and Sakura decide it's best to not bother telling him. Sasuke wants to know since he was passed out when it happened, but they don't tell Nagato. Regardless, it gets around the village and Nagato would get more dark stares than normal. The Chunin exams occur. Nagato would still be continuing his training, trying to get better desperately despite still being timid. The first test is a written test. It mostly goes over the same as it would have with Naruto. Because other than temperament, Nagato and Naruto might be the same. And whether it be through pure fire to pass it as it was with Naruto, Nagato might still take the last question for the sake of his team. So I would assume he passes it. Then comes the Forest of Death. Oh, that name. Nagato would be impersonated, but Sasuke could see it easily. Nagato would get swallowed by Orochimaru's snake. Sasuke would freeze as Orochimaru's snake would just be about to attack him, but Nagato would show up in his tailed beast chakra cloak, having escaped his own snake to protect Sasuke. Instead of making fun of him like Naruto would, Nagato goes back to what Sasuke would have said when Nagato froze while fighting the demon brothers, and tells Sasuke that he'll always have his back. How he knows what it's like to be scared, and that he would not let him fight alone. Despite his fear, Sasuke is encouraged by the way this cowardly ninja has just jumped in the way for his teammate. They still get skunked badly. Sasuke gets the Curse Seal of Heaven Mark and Nagato's seal is closed up by Orochimaru to stop him from making use of the Tailed Beast's power. After this, it's mostly the same. They take the scroll from Team Oboro and pass. Then comes the preliminary matches in which Nagato faces off against Kiba and Akamaru. Sadly though, Nagato is defeated. He just isn't strong enough, both physically or mentally, and ends up defeated but this doesn't stop him. He takes his defeat pretty well, stating it only shows that he needs to grow, and that he'll try again next time. Sasuke manages to make it to the finals, where he would be facing off against Neji Hyuga. But before this, they all get some time off to train. Nagato ends up finding Jiraiya peeping on girls in the bathhouse. At first, Jiraiya isn't interested in teaching him, but upon discovering that he is the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, he decides to. Jiraiya removes the seal that Rochimaru put on him and begins to train him but the first thing he goes after is Nagato's timid mentality. He begins by teaching Nagato to believe in himself and to be strong. He understands that Nagato cries a lot, and that's not bad. He tells him that it's his strength, as it allows him to connect better with people who have been in bad circumstances. Nagato would remember how he and Inari connected and nods. They spend time essentially doing what Naruto did in training, except Nagato masters it faster, and even manages to learn more things too. By the time Nagato is done training with Jiraiya, he is caught up to where Naruto would be in this arc, and perhaps even surpasses him. Nagato returns to Konoha and decides he wishes to watch Sasuke's match. The events of the Konoha crush occur. Most of that remains the same. And when Gara attacks, he also faces off against him. In the end, he tells Gara that he understands what it's like to be alone. To have nobody love him. He tells him that he's sorry that he had to go through with that, but if Gara had never had a true friend, Nagato would be his friend. So that was all heartwarming and stuff, but back to the story. The third Hokage has died, and this sucks. Nagato would indeed be sad, but he would be crying the most simply because Konohamaru is crying. Jiraiya is tasked with finding the next Hokage, and they choose Tsunade. Truth be told, it's mostly the same as before, except Nagato never challenges Tsunade. It plays out otherwise exactly the same. Besides Tsunade, they meet up with Itachi. However, he is not Akatsuki, but a part of some other mercenary unit run by Tobi. Otherwise, it's all basically the same. After this, Nagato would learn about Sasuke's cursed seal and that he left with the Sound 4. He joins the team to bring his friend home and eventually makes it to the Valley of the End. Nagato begs Sasuke to come back, but Sasuke refuses. Nagato begins to believe that the seal is messing with Sasuke's mind and attempts to bring him in by force. In the end, they clash and Sasuke just barely comes out on top from pure luck and circumstance. After this, Nagato believes Sasuke can still be saved and trains with Jiraiya. After two and a half years of training, Nagato would return with Jiraiya. The Kazakage rescue mission occurs almost exactly the same. Then comes the Tenchi Bridge Reconnaissance mission. Under the guise of Sasori, Yamato would track down Orochimaru, and most of this actually occurs the same as well. It's until they catch up with Sai at Orochimaru's hideouts that things change. Nagato attempts to convince Sasuke to return to the village with him, but Sasuke acts with indifference and even attempts to kill Nagato. After this, Nagato is confused with how Sasuke could do that. He believes Sasuke to be his friend, a brother even. This is where things change. Naruto would continue trying. Nagato gives up. Nagato stops believing that Sasuke could be saved, even to the point where he stops believing in connections between people. They mean nothing. Even brothers can betray each other. After this, everything continues somewhat the same. Nagato is far more distant and cold and more closed off than he's ever been. The only person he really seems to connect with is Jiraiya. 
They continued the Akatsuki suppression arc as well as the Itachi pursuit mission, but this time Nagato is more willing to kill Sasuke than before, no longer having faith in their bond. Itachi stops Nagato to ask about his intentions. Nagato merely says he will do whatever is necessary, whether that means bringing Sasuke back for justice or killing him. Itachi seems less than pleased with his answer, yet still implants the crow into Nagato. During this time, Jiraiya has been investigating about the new set of mercenaries who had tried to take the tailed beast, but dies. Nagato is summoned from the Hokage's residence and is told about this, as well as being recommended to go learn from the frog sages of Mount Myoboku. At this point, Nagato seems to completely lose faith in the bonds between people. He begins to wonder why he even cares about people anymore. All they ever do is bring him pain. They either hate him for no reason, betray him, or die. No matter what happens, he is always destined to be alone. And any time he would believe that he's not alone is no more than a dream. Now, elsewhere, Sasuke has joined up with Obito's group, and it's here that he's introduced to Hashirama Senju's cells by Obito's design. This causes Sasuke's eyes to evolve into a Rinnegan, which Obito then plans to use as part of his Eye of the Moon plan. At first, he needed Madara's eyes, but upon Sasuke's exposure to these cells, his own eyes evolve into Rinnegan. Madara plans to use Sasuke to do his plan. With Sasuke's newfound power, they attack Konoha. This was Sasuke's desire after all, and the entire place is devastated, much like before. After his training has begun to pay off, Nagato returns to stop the attack. He and Sasuke duel for quite a while, and in the end, when tempted by Kurama, Nagato undoes the seal. Kurama takes complete control, and with the power of the Rinnegan, Sasuke subdues Kurama. It is then all too easy to take him away from Nagato. Sadly, this would leave Nagato dead. With the fall of Konoha, the other four main villages gather to figure out what they must do. And it's here that Tobi would appear. He would declare war on them when they refuse to give up the Eight Tails. Most everything plays out the same until the fourth Shinobi World War. The Mizukage, Meitarumi, would ask the Akatsuki for assistance. Don't forget, this is the good Akatsuki that Naruto is leading, due to needing everything they have. At this time, Naruto has been investigating Jiraiya's death and is just itching to get his hands on whoever killed him. Kisame, without being stopped by Mike Guy, would have taken the Eight Tails from Killer B and Tobi, and Madara would have used Sasuke to summon the Gido statue. Then, in a moment of betrayal, Madara would use the Zetsu in Sasuke to force Sasuke to use the Samsara of Heavenly Light technique to bring him back to life. After this, Madara is betrayed by Zetsu. In the end, Kaguya is restored to life, as is the Ten Tails. The only people who don't end up in the infinite Tsukiyomi would be the Akatsuki due to Naruto's use of the Rinnegan. Together, the Akatsuki face off against Kaguya and the Ten Tails. Obito is there and joins them in trying to defeat Kaguya. The battle is fierce and spans multiple dimensions. The sad truth is, I don't see Naruto winning this. Even with his Rinnegan and Sage Mode and all that, I don't think he could beat her. After all, she was only beaten through the use of Six Paths Shibaku Tensei, which required both Naruto and Sasuke to use. At this point, Sasuke would be dead, and honestly, I don't think that Naruto could beat her like this, so I guess the world ends. Bummer. This really isn't the ending I had hoped for. I had wanted something more lighthearted, but all things considered, characters need to follow their personalities, and Nagato's personality naturally leads to him losing faith as he does not have the strength of will that Naruto does. And without Naruto being present in some of these situations, it all turns out sour. He would be more likely than Naruto to give in to Kurama's temptations, and that would turn out badly because such a thing is exactly what Tobi would want. Naruto can't save Sasuke because he doesn't even know who Sasuke is, and he can't stop Kaguya because neither he nor Sasuke have the Chibaku Tensei. I don't think Kaguya would be beaten without this stuff, but hey, it's just my opinion. I would love it if you'd tell me what you think in the comments below. Maybe you thought of a scenario I didn't. I'm open to hearing it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more content like this. Peace.